Hey everybody, this is Patrick GMT and I'm partnering with Chegg, and here we want to look at an introduction to the derivative as a function. So we're going to graphically see the relationship between a function and its derivative. We'll find a derivative using the definition, and then we'll find where a function is not differentiable given a graph. We'll just look at some, again, some graphical properties. So typically in a calculus course, when you first run into der derivatives, they tell you about the derivative of a function f at a number a. And this definition <clears throat> we use is that the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. Again, that's what we say is the value f prime of a. So all we're going to do is we're just going to replace this number a with a variable x. And by doing that, now we've got produced a new function, which is known as the derivative function. It's the derivative of f. So again, notice I've just replaced my a's with x's. So no, no major leap here. Just some alternate notation, too. Sometimes you'll see this derivative with respect to x, this d of dx of f of x. And there's a couple other notations, too, but these are the ones that most often you'll see. So, okay, so an important remark. f prime of x can be interpreted as being the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at x f of x. Okay, so the derivative can be interpreted as the slope of the tangent line at that x-coordinate on the other graph. This is something to always keep in mind. So a common question, a lot of times they'll say, oh, okay, here's some graph y equals f of x, sketch the derivative graph. Or you may be given the derivative graph and have to try to sketch a graph that could match up with the, the original function f of x. But here we've got f, we're gonna go try to sketch the derivative. Okay, so for what I do, what I do for these is I always look for like where the graph sort of bottoms out, like little bottoms of hills, um, or I should say bottoms of valleys and tops of hills, because at those points on my graph, we'll have to be a little careful. We'll talk about this, but on these, notice my graph is nice and smooth and has no sharp points on it. So these nice, smooth tops and bottoms, if you think about all of those places, the tangent line there would have a slope of zero. All those tangent lines would have a slope of zero. So that means on the derivative graph, at those corresponding x-coordinates, the derivative will equal zero. So we'll pretend this is at negative one. So on the derivative graph at x equals negative one, its uh, y value should be zero because again, it says on the other graph, f of x, it says its tangent line has a slope of zero. Well, the same thing at x equals 1 and then at x equals 3. So let's see. Let's look at this little section of the graph between negative 1 and positive 1. Notice our graph is increasing over that interval, our graph of f of x. Notice all of the tangent lines through there would have a positive slope. And to me, it looks like, okay, so here it's positive. Here it looks like, to me, you know, at the origin, it looks like it's, it's where it's the most steep. And then it starts leveling back out again to where it gets, you know, at, at the top of the graph at x equals 1. So what that tells me is it says that the y values on my derivative graph are going to get bigger, 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 bigger. They're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. And then, okay, so now they're maxing out at zero because that's where it's steepest. And then it says, okay, the slopes of the tangent lines are going, they're starting to get flatter and flatter and flatter back to zero. Now I can do the same argument from one to three. So notice over this section of the graph, f of x, all of the tangent lines would be negative. And near the, the you know, as soon as you move past x equals one, okay, they're negative, but just kind of slightly tilted down. Again, it looks like maybe at, at x equals 2, that's where it's the most steep to me. And then as we get closer to the x-coordinate of 3, they're still negative, but they're getting closer to 0. They're starting to level out. So the same thing. I'm going to have my uh, derivative graph decrease. It'll, it'll have a, what's the best way to say it? The, it's, it's most negative value at, 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 at x equals 2. And then, okay, it's going to go back to, to 3. So again, remember, all of these points on the derivative correspond to slopes of tangent lines. Okay, so let's just keep on trucking. Notice as we go from 3 onwards on our graph of f of x, they are the tangent lines. Okay, they're positive, they're positive, they're positive. But the, the slope is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So the y-coordinates on my derivative graph should just get bigger and bigger and bigger. 
And we could do the same thing on the on the left side. So let's come from the left. On, or let's think about our, our again our original graph f of x. So we said the slope of the tangent line is zero at negative one. If we move to the left, it's pointing down, so it's a little bit negative. And then they get steeper as I move to the left. <clears throat> so what that tells me is the y values on my derivative graph are just going to go uh, to negative infinity. Because again, you know, if you think about way far over here on the f of x graph, they're going to be really steep and negative. So that's the basic idea. This would now be a rough sketch of f prime of x. And again, it's worth pointing out, notice that where the derivative is positive, right, where the derivative graph is positive, the original function, the y values may be positive or negative. We don't care about that. But where the derivative is positive, the original function is decreasing. Where the derivative is negative, notice that my original function is decreasing. Those are going to be very useful things. So I spent a few minutes on this because <clears throat> I've seen people get really tripped up on these, and sometimes you'll have multiple of these graphs on the same thing. So take your time with these. Um, I mean, even when I see them, I have to slow down a lot of times. Okay, so given f of x equals x to the third, let's find the derivative. Well, that means we have to use this uh, definition, the limit is h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x. Now, computing the derivative using the definition is tedious. So Some of you may have uh, seen some shortcuts. If you haven't, you will shortly. But often at the beginning, uh, at least in a lot of courses, they'll want you to use the definition. So, okay, so I've got to replace, I've got to find a value for f of x plus h. Well, since my function is x to the third, that would give me x plus h to the third. And then I subtract away the original function, which is x to the third over h. So now I've got to evaluate this limit. Well, I, if I plug in h equals 0, I'm going to get 0 over 0. So that doesn't help me. So what we'll have to do is we'll expand out this term x plus h to the third. And if you do that, you get x to the third plus 3x squared h plus 3x h squared. And you can either just multiply this out, x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. I'm using what's known as the binomial uh, theorem to, to do this. Um, I left one term out, let's see, plus h to the third. So that's the expansion of x plus h raised to the third power. And then if you subtract, we still have to subtract away x to the third, again, all over h. So now we try to simplify. So I notice my... Uh, my, my terms that have no h attached, those cancel out, so my x to the third and uh, negative x to the third will just cancel. Notice everything left in the numerator has an h, so I can factor an h out of the numerator and be left with 3x squared plus 3xh plus h squared. That's all over h still. Well, again, I can cancel out those h's. <clears throat> You can imagine there being a 1 left over in the denominator. And if I plug in h equals 0, I would have 3x squared plus 3x times 0 plus 0 squared. And that just leaves me with 3x squared. So that would be the derivative of the function x to the third. We get 3x squared. And again, there's going to be shortcuts that you'll learn. You can just look at that and say, oh, it's 3x squared. You won't have to go through this whole process. Because especially when you get to more complicated functions, evaluating this limit is difficult, if not impossible. Okay, so last but not least, quickly, where is a function not differentiable? And again, this is looking at things graphically. So a few places. If your graph has a sharp point to it, so notice, um, you know, like our graph a second ago, it was nice and smooth and rounded. Here, this graph has a sharp point that's called a cusp. So it cusps at whatever that x-coordinate is, um, we'll call it here a, it would be not differentiable. Not differentiable. So we would say f prime of a does not exist. Likewise, if there's a discontinuity at that x-coordinate, uh, so let, maybe call, we'll call this a1, we'll call this a sub 2. If the graph is not continuous at a point, again, the function's not differentiable. Um, and I always thought, well, there can't be a tangent line because there's no point on the graph there. And then another place where a function is not differentiable, suppose the tangent lines are getting steeper and steeper and steeper, maybe positive or negative, and at one point on the graph, that tangent line is vertical. Well, if that happens, again, at that x-coordinate, we would say that the derivative does not exist. 
So all of these places, so f prime of a sub two does not exist. And we would say f prime of a sub three does not exist. So again, there, there's certainly some, uh, some uh, reasons why, for example, the, the derivative doesn't exist. Here, the derivative, remember a, a vertical line, its slope is undefined. Well, the derivative is also undefined. And at a cusp, it turns out that the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit aren't equal when we look at this definition. That's, that's the whole problem with, with cusps. But okay, a very, very quick little introduction. There's absolutely a lot more to talk about in regards to derivatives. It's going to be, I mean, it's basically what you do for, use them for the whole first semester. So, but again, some important things to, to think about. Definitely know the definition um, because again, that's what a derivative is. That, that conceptually tells us what it is. And also just this relationship between where a derivative is positive and negative and where the original function is increasing or decreasing. One last remark. If you've got a function, f of x, and you're going to sketch its derivative, its derivative is a unique function. You'll get one unique function. If we were went backwards, if we had f, of, f prime of x and wanted to sketch f of x, we would get a graph that looks like the gr blue graph, but it could be shifted up or down. Because notice, even if you shift it up or down, that's not going to change the slopes of the tangent lines. It's going to change its position on the graph, of course, but its tangent lines are going to have that exact same slope. So that's another little, little remark I want to point out. But okay, just a quick little introduction. I hope it makes some sense, and I hope it helps you out.